today we're going to discuss key tops and replacing the key tops. As you can see here, this is a nice Yamaha piano. It's about 35 years old, yet the key tops look pretty good. Well, not so much on this piano. I uh, brought the keys back, just the white keys, 52 keys, back from a Baldwin Acrosonic. And you can see the ends of these keys are all chewed up. I can take my fingernail and uh, chip that right away. Um, basically, uh, I went to a seminar a few years back, and uh, a, one of the PTG members gave a, a clinic on how to replace key tops. And at the end of the evening, um, I added up all the time to do everything that he suggested to do. And it added up to seven and a half to eight hours worth of time to do a set of key tops. I thought to myself, you can only get two, two and a half tunings worth of revenue for that job. So how is eight hours cost effective? Um, I do it in less than two hours and I'm about to show you how. Now, I recognize that not all shops are prepared this way. Now cleanliness is next to godliness and I'm a sinner, as you can see. But I, I get a lot of work done out here. Um, I have some machines that I'm very fortunate to have. I think this is from the old Wurlitzer factory. Um, this one I modeled after a machine that was at the Wurlitzer factory, but I couldn't get that particular machine. Um, I've taken a bench motor switch and basically made myself a safety guard here and a saw blade. I've made some runners so that I have basically a sled that glides parallel to the cutting blade and then set up myself two guides here. So I can take uh, one of the keys, set it here, I've got a stop at the end, set it down in there and then bind it again against itself to where it can hold secure. And then as I plunge it through, it will cut off just the necessary key top and a little bit of wood, preparing for the extra thickness of the new key top. Now, yes, I'm using a Steinway A here that I have in my shop being restored uh, to uh, be the workbench for my keys. Now, as you can see here, I've already trimmed the surfaces or taken off the key tops more than half of the keys of this Baldwin Acrosonic. So as we go here we can see the problem that these keys are all chewed up and the customer wants the piano looking nice again. Again we're going for cost so we're going to use a Vegas Ventures key top and uh, glue it up tonight have it ready for the customer tomorrow total time in this project will probably be less than two hours when we're done. As I mentioned before I've got two places that the key will bind against and as you can see here I've got a guide here I've got a guide here and a guide here all of them are adjustable okay I can adjust the depth of the key how far in it goes I can adjust how deep I want the blade to go into the key top surface and then this is what is going to keep it parallel to the blade. And oftentimes I'll take a straight edge straight off of that um, blade out here. And then I know to leave a little dimension there. And generally it's a guessing game uh, there. But uh, what we do is we, we guess on the side of too little. And then I'll stop, I'll make a minor adjustment out, I'll do it again until I get the right depth in the back of the key. The front of the key, it's pretty easy to see where it's going to plunge into the key, uh, key at the end there. Here we go, I'm going to start it up and we're going to show you how this works. It basically, I'm going to bind the key on the back, I'm going to bind the key down on the front, and then on, uh, on this thumb, I push it toward the front, so I'm binding it in all three directions. And I hope you can see that, uh, that as I plunged it in there, we do have a little bit of fraying that takes place. Generally, my hand can get all of those splinters off, but you'll see that it brought up good wood surface. It's taken off very little mass on the key itself, and it's ready to have the new key top put on. Okay, now you see that we've moved inside. This is so I can watch Judge Judy while I do key tops. Now, so far we've spent about 20 minutes resurfacing these, at the most 30 minutes, okay? Now I want to show you that we're using Vegas key tops, it's probably the least expensive, but they're very, very nice. I use the short-headed versions for most of them, they fit perfectly on the keys themselves um, with minimal trimming, okay? Um, I guess this one goes down at number one here. So. Um, 
let's talk about the adhesive. Over the years, I've used various things, um, but uh, this is a product from Pacific Piano. You can get the same product at various places. It says it's plastic cement. It's what they recommend for key tops. This isn't what I want you to see. What I want you to see, that if you buy or go into your wife's crafts area, you'll find something like a tacky glue or something of that nature, which will often come with a top that looks like this. Okay? So I take that off of one of her glues, and I put it on the actual container from Pacific Piano, and now I've got the perfect medium for laying the perfect bead down on the key itself. Okay? So, this next step, what I'm going to do is I will take out of the container all of the key tops, and I'll put all the A's, B's, C's, and so on in order, and then I personally, my method is I go ahead and put all A's on, then I put all B's on, and I go through it that way. Um, what I'll do is, this is all on one uh, piece of plywood so I can take it in and out of the shop. But I, what I will do is I will actually move the keys to where there's about a half inch in between them. I'll take uh, half of them and move them to another area. And uh, it makes it easier for me to put the keys on and uh, do it very, very quickly. This next stage should take about another 30 to 45 minutes. Well, as you can see, we've gotten started. First, we put on the two ends. You can see the larger key top there on uh, A0. I have put on all of the A's throughout the action. You can see I divided this up and, and uh, sectioned out the keys about a half inch to an inch apart. You'll notice the very last key is an odd key and you can see how wide that is. So when I started we put on just A0, B0, and then I started with all the A's. Then I'll do all the B's, C's, and so on. And that will take approximately 20 minutes. Right, as you can see here, all of the key tops have been glued up and are ready to go. I'm just about to take them outside to the jig where we will uh, trim them up. Uh, basically, with the Vegas tops, they fit almost perfectly if you get the short-headed ones for any spinet consoles and uprights and most grands. Um, occasionally you have to get the longer heads on a grand piano to fit, but these fortunately fit pretty good. Now you will have an occasional overlap, and the way I, I set them on, the front portion fits almost perfectly. I align them to the, to the uh, flat side, and then the insert, there'll be a little bit of a hangover on uh, your F's and sometimes your E's or B's. So we need to be careful and be aware of that. Um, most of the time you can actually take the keys just like they are, even with a little hangover, and put them in the piano, and they actually work because there's enough space that was normally provided by the manufacturer. But to ensure that we have free movement of the keys, I'm gonna go out and trim this up and I'll show you how we do that. Okay, we're back in the shop now. No more watching TV while we work. Now I want you to know that we probably collectively, in all the time we've spent from the first taking off of the key top to where we are now, I am an hour and ten minutes into this job. Now that of course doesn't include the time that we took them out and put them in the car and that sort of thing, but just the actual doing of the job, an hour and ten minutes. Now I do have a machine from the Wurlitzer factory that if these were not the Vegas key tops and you just had the sheets like they used to do, we can actually trim that up right here on this machine and we can plunge that into the uh, machine to, to cut the notch to where it was absolutely perfect. But as I put the key tops on, I have a little gauge to know how far over the overhang should be. And my generally, I take my finger and stop that right at the notch. And it works very, very well. Now, I'm not going to be using the trimming gauge because most of the keys don't need trimming. I'm not going to use this because that was the surfacing. Uh, machine. I am going to use this high-tech $50 tool from Harbor Freight or your favorite uh, local store, which is just one-inch sander. Now, this can ruin key tops very, very quickly if you don't know what you're doing. We basically have just a little bit of a hangover on this, and uh, we're just going to trim that up just a little bit. Turn on the, uh, hopefully this is plugged in, 
Yeah, we'll, we'll turn this on. And we're just going to set this in there just enough to just take away a little bit of that overhang. I've got about eight to ten keys that I need to do this with and you can see how quick quick that was and we have notched and the nice thing about it is you can be uh, feeling along as the plastic becomes uh, flush with the wood you can actually see when the wood starts to show up on your belt and uh, it's very easy to do this uh, very quick I'm gonna spend maybe another five minutes so we'll be into this job an hour and 15, an hour and 20 at the most, and then we're going to load them up, take them back to the customer. Okay, at this point, we're back in the customer's home, and I called it an Acrosonic. Well, it's a Baldwin product. I forgot it was actually a Baldwin Howard studio. But anyway, uh, we've got the keys here on the ground. So we just pan down there. We're going to take them out of the key clamps. Now, these key clamps are Bill Spurlock uh, key clamps. If you don't have them, buy them. They're cheap. Don't try and make them yourself. You can't do it for the money. He sells them. This process here will only take another maybe five minutes of the time. And then we check to make sure that the keys are not rubbing, that, that there's no overhang, that they're not affecting any of the adjacent keys. Uh, sometimes if you're not uh, trimming them uh, enough, uh, you can have those issues. I don't think we're going to have those issues today. Oh, these go in pretty quick if you've done it before. Just lift up the back check, slide it on in. And then you, you go, go through and make sure that the keys are not rubbing on each other, that everything's functioning properly and looking good. All right, so the keys are now in the piano. Now, one of the things we do now is to make sure that you set the keys on properly and the reveal in between the keys is proper. Um, you can't always trust the reveal between the keys because you might have... Uh, keys that aren't bushed properly. I haven't charged the appropriate amount to get new key bushings in the piano or, or anything of that nature. Customer just paid for key top. So right now I'm looking for any keys that might rub against each other or don't look appropriate. Um, and a little bit of glue can seep out. Now when I put the key tops on and any glue comes out, I typically will run my finger down that, get that glue off before. But on occasion I have to take my fingernail and kind of peel some glue off. To where it's not uh, it's not showing in that reveal also if you've got a little bit of a plastic lip on there um, you might need to take a file now I've got a very uh, specialized tool that I robbed from my uh, wife's medicine cabinet I think it's called a nail file and we take an as final preparation for being put in the piano I will take that file and do the last of my work. If you noticed, uh, just a, on the last video, um, we were actually using a one-inch belt sander in the shop. Well, that's getting it in the ballpark. Right now, we're doing the fine-tuning, the fine adjustments, getting the little bits of glue that might be there, and uh, away we go. So now we have new key tops. Uh, the piano needed to be pitch-raised and tuned. And now, not only do we have a piano that sounds good, but now we have a piano that looks good. Here we go. This is the final product. And uh, happy customer, happy piano. Um, there's still some regulation to be done on this old beast. But overall, if you'd have seen the way it was before, oh, she's fine. That's the best shot in the world. Go ahead and sit down, sweetheart. But we've got, we've got a little one that can't wait to put her fingers back on that piano. And this is the real payment of what we do is when somebody sits down and says, wow, it looks so much better and they want to play it.